everyone, and welcome to our new episode of The Three Whiskeyteers, the show that likes to share our whiskey and have a lot of fun. Now, I'm Jamie, your host. We have our angel-haired hipster, Curtis. His son burns behind the camera. We have our happy hunter, Eddie. And today we have a wonderful guest, Courtney, from uh, Ben's Beverage Depot, uh, has come to join us. And she is not quite an expert on whiskey, but she considers herself an enthusiast professional. Uh -huh. Professional. <laughs> Uh, Curtis, we got something here behind. I don't. I didn't see well, no, no. what we have. So. Courtney is a lifesaver. Lifesaver. A lifesaver. Every time I go down to Ben's and I have a question, Courtney has already tried it. Yeah, Courtney's so like she, it's not bad. Never ever. <laughs> <laughs> I call it market research. Okay. <laughs> okay. She, she always, you know, and it does. It's not just whiskey. If I say, "Hey, I'm looking for a really good sour beer," you know. Uh, but, but, you know, I want something, you know, something that's not too sweet. Or, you know, she'll, oh, yes. Well, this one from Belgium in 1942. <laughs> and, 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 and she hands it to me, and I take it home, and she's never wrong. Yeah. You know what? She, yeah. I've asked her plenty of questions, and I've not been disappointed yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a kiss method type guy. No, keep it simple, stupid. So I'm like, does this get you drunk? She's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we go. <laughs> Not really, but you know what I mean. So you know, uh, Ben sells all kinds of beers, mm -hmm. all kinds of uh, whiskeys and tequilas and wines mm -hmm. and liqueurs, liqueurs and anything you can basically and, think of. Yeah, anything that it has an alcoholic percentage that is sold in the state of Iowa and we can get our hands on it we have it yeah 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 really neat stuff mm -hmm. uh, the, the variety of beers that uh, I've never even heard of too so it's pretty cool we have more than a thousand different varieties of beer <sighs> that's cool. crazy mm -hmm. we can't even keep a common like we used to keep a regular uh, keg list we can't do it because it changes every day things go off of it things come back on it it's mm. just it's just day to day you just have to call and ask day to day be yourself yeah. so the beer is the main what you sell the most of, do you think? Or? Um, I think that's what we have the most of in general, um, because we wholesale to bars and restaurants. I oh. think we have, um, I would say we have we have a ton of wine, but I think we have the widest variety of alcohol, spirits, whiskey, what have you. Um, so when bars and restaurants open up and they're looking for um, to make specialty cocktails or classic cocktails or something to that effect, you know, it's like, hey, can we get this particular rare whiskey or liqueur back and we're like yeah we got you we can fun. do this fun. that's so, awesome yeah, that's cool. awesome i did not know that okay let's sure. uh, okay. let's pop that up and let's see what we have oh, very gently ooh. Oh. Ooh. very gently ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay well we have, we have uncle nearest 1856 premium whiskey oh my goodness it's 100 proof uh, why don't you go ahead and get that started? <laughs> and then we have uh, good old number seven. Good old number seven. <laughs> I did not think this would hit. What's going Jack on? Daniels? What, this is a surprise to me right now, folks. What are we doing here? Well, I didn't think this yeah, would ever us. be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Jack Daniels is not one of my favorites. I've never. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a, wow. a really good whiskey, but it's not one of my favorites. Uh -huh. So I usually, you know. But, the Uncle Nearest is the individual who mm. taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. Uh -huh. Oh my god. And he's also the individual probably who came up with the Lincoln County method of making whiskey. He was. Yeah. So this is a modern rendition of what they believe it was supposed to be. And this is what it is now. Oh my gosh, this so is So I exciting. thought we'd sort of compare them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, very good. Right. Wow, okay. That's great. Okay. No. So, so <laughs> do you I'm want to know more of no, no, yeah. really So, um, Uncle Nearest, Nearest Green, mm. um, was a freed slave uh, who basically needed to do something. He needed to learn how to do, like, a trade of some sort. And actually, there was a lot of African-American distillers during... Um, uh, well, during slavery, and that was like a job that you could do. You yeah. could make the whiskey for somebody who was going to go and sell it. Mm -hmm. And so it was something that he already knew how to do. So when he was free, it's kind of like, well, now I can do this on yeah, my own. Yeah, skill. Yeah. Right, exactly. So what he ended up being was a person that was teaching other people how to make whiskey, kind of the way it happened to him. You were an apprentice. You kind of you know worked your way up. Uh -huh. And so he just 
happened to teach Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. And it was like, it's an amazing story of the two of them because they were lifelong friends. They were equals, their families were enmeshed and they were friends with each other. I mean, even still today, both of their families are still like the great grandmothers of the family are like best friends and they never go anywhere without each other. Wow. Like it's, it's a completely beautiful story. And usually things like that, you know, you kind of make up for like a, like a distillery tour, but this is actually true and wonderful. And um, Nearest Green was the first, and as I'd spoken to Curtis about this earlier, like, unfortunately, the only um, black uh, master distiller in the history of whiskey in the United States. Get out of here. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. So, and, that's, that's and the woman wall. who put this together is the first African American to be on the cover of whiskey magazine mm -hmm. really yeah oh okay. very interesting yeah. so we're making some history here yes because we're the first ones to have this on the show <laughs> I'm just i seriously doubt that <laughs> <laughs> hey it sounded good so I, I have a question um th th has this been in continual production since 1856 or was it no when was it, re it was restarted yeah it was it, the um the woman that he was speaking of came to um like when Lynchburg, Weaver, wasn't yeah, it? yeah. When she Weaver. came and she wanted to. She did some history and and like unearthed this whole story and basically found the original recipe. You know, recipe. Mm. But this is as like it's as close as you can get. It's not like quite the original mm -hmm. recipe. So um, yeah, it's the it is what this should be. Wow. And it, you know, we're talking about okay. I, I like to find out what the mash is. Mash bill. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how this worked out this way because it doesn't make a hundred, but 84% corn, 8% uh -huh. rye, and 8% malt. Now, that doesn't make a hundred, but, but that's the only information I could find. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and um, it, then it is, uh, they do the, the link economy process, and they use sugar maple charcoal for the filter. Oh. Okay. So, I don't know if that had a whole lot to do with it. But I'm trying to figure out, since this was sourced, it wasn't, I mean, they went and they, they found people who would make it for them. Yeah. But they, they did, at that point, did not have a distillery themselves. Right. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, so Jack Daniels doesn't source. Right. Right. So that leaves uh, Pritchard and Dickles. Uh -huh. So tasting this, to my palate, I sense a lot of Dickles in it. So okay. I'm thinking it's either... An original Dickles and a Pritchard blend. Hmm. Because where else would it come from? Because th they, they made a lot of this. This wasn't just a small batch. Right. This was a lot. I mean, it has gotten international acclaim. I mean, so so I'm wondering actually where this came from. Now, apparently, they now have their own distillery yeah. and they're starting to make their own, and that's going to be interesting stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get let's get to it. Let's do Uncle's first. Sure. Oh, okay. Let's do Uncle's. Maybe said. What do you think? Oh, boy, it's, it's good. Uh, it's definitely a sour mash, that's for sure. Um, it's kind of dry. Um, big kick, little burn. Um, I like it. Yeah, but not as much burn as, as Jack. No. No, not even close. I'm okay. getting a, I'm getting, I'm getting sesame seed at the beginning. Oh. Anybody else getting that? I was getting that at the end. Really? I thought it was a little sweet at the end. I mean, if Jack was like this, I'd be buying Jack. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. You, you, <laughs> am I wrong here? No. Okay, so, so, Jack, yeah. so here's the Jack. I have not had Jack Daniels in a very long time. Mm -hmm. It tastes like something that you drink fast. And it tastes like something that people mix Coke with. And that's what I was just right. going to say. But I'm saying, like, you Perfect. can't, like, you oh, can't, like, okay. yes, Sorry. yeah. Yeah. You can't identify it because you're kind of like, ah, oh, this is the thing that you just throw back really, really quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. But this has a lot more complexity. I, I mean, I don't know who did the blend on this. I don't know who, who picked the barrels, but man, they really nailed it. I, yeah. I understand yeah. why this is getting double gold in San Francisco and yeah. winning awards all over the world. Yeah, I definitely think this is easier to drink, per se. The Jack is? Yeah, the Jack is. Uh, it is. And what, like, I think it has more sweetness to it, yeah, and that sweetness. seems kind yeah. of, it goes down easier because yeah. of the sweetness factor, where, I don't know, there's kind of a, like you said, like a, a sesame, like toasted sesame oil yeah. kind of thing, yeah. like black pepper, um, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, 
Yeah. It's Almost nice like, stuff. Mm, yeah, I like it. Yeah, but there is still sweetness in it. I mean, in the palate, I mean, not the initial, but but in the palate, and then when you swallow, there is a sweetness. I thought there was I'm, a, I'm definitely yeah. catching yeah. the rye in here, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, there's only 8%. Bit, eight but it's like, uh, I, I definitely don't catch any rye in this one. Drink. Burn, you got any opinions? Burn, you got any drinking game. Um, <laughs> you had, I, I kind of received these in a weird mismatched order, so I'm not sure which is which. Um, this one uh, dances on the palate a lot more. It's a lot more peppery, a lot more spicy. It's more enjoyable, whereas this one's just uh, really clean, doesn't have as much flavor to it, not as much complexity. So I'm guessing this one is the Uncle Nearest. Mm. Yeah, the light um, one. The light one it's, the also, it's also a lot hotter. Yeah, mm -hmm. or a little bit hotter. Yeah, I can see the similarity in this. Can you see the similarity? The uh, yes, yes, between both. But I, I, the contrast is just uh, it, 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 in the details. It's like whoa, this is a lot better. I think the sweetness difference and factor would be to say this is more honey mm -hmm. and this is more like maple syrup. Ah, yeah, I can tell. I can yeah. I, can I tell would it. say honey and caramel. Yeah, that okay. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, what did you say it was mixed? It was filtered with. Char charcoal what kind? The charcoal, uh, from what I've read, the charcoal that they used was uh, sugar maple. Sugar oh, maple. Okay. From okay. sugar maple trees. Yeah. I don't know. Is that, so is that the process? A, that I'm not sure if that's the process for all of it. I know oh. Lincoln County filters everything through charcoal, but I'm not sure if they all use sugar maple oh. or not. Mm. Well, I don't know that. Yeah. I have another question about these. These are not bourbons. No. No. Okay. So you kind of get confused when you're talking in Tennessee. Um, okay, technically... A lot of people can get confused that that might be a bourbon, but... This is a sour patch, It's a Tennessee right? whiskey because, they want it because it's made in Tennessee, okay? You hate to say this because people get upset. That has all the qualifications to be a bourbon. That can be a bourbon, okay? Mm -hmm. So... You know, it is a, it, it fits the legal definition of a bourbon. They just don't but want to be called that? They don't yeah, want to be called that. They want to separate that. themselves and be called a Tennessee whiskey. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I mean... But it's also the charring of the inside of the barrels, too, which defies the legal definitions of bourbon as far as, like, you know, the laws that govern what makes bourbon bourbon. You have to have only new oak barrels, and they cannot be charred. Mm. So, oh, as soon as you okay. char them, it becomes something else, and that's Tennessee the Tennessee whiskey, that's yeah. kind of their thing. Wow, okay, okay, yeah. okay. that right. makes sense. But everything else matches bourbon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really. yeah. The this does not, because right. this does not meet any of that. Then. The alcohol content's too high. Yeah, yeah. too high in yeah. other yeah. factors. Yeah. Too high? Mm -hmm. The oh. color is nice, but so is Jack. I mean, they both mm -hmm. are really nice. Well, yeah. Then this is like a, uh, I don't know how you would say, but it's the homage to the guy that kind of started the whiskey revolution maybe in our country yeah that got it kick-started into how we have our whiskey today yeah you know this reminds you of like the coca-cola like there's the original um recipe that is different from what we drink coca-cola yeah. now yeah so and i have had this european cola which they try to they think is what the formula was supposed to be and the difference is just very slight but it's just like more feels more organic and I think that's what this is. This feels more like, more more defined, more less less processed, like so like, do you like think, cleaner. Do you think that people in a blind tasting would be able to pick out which one? Oh was my Jack? gosh, I think so. Okay, oh, yeah. these two. Uh, but, yeah. but, but I think the biggest extension. You were, I agree with you. It's the sweetness. Like the Jack Daniels, you can pick up the sweetness right away, and the other one's kind of like. Phew. Now the the upper tier of Jack Daniels, I haven't very little experience with. Oh, Gentleman Jack? Gentleman Jack, and you know, uh, so have you, I mean, how would you compare them? Are, are they closer? Do they get... I think that it's, um, I mean, this is going to sound generic, but it's it's basically a, a saying, talking about smoothness. So when we talk about the burn and everything, there's just less of a burn. I mean, it's more pleasant Jack Daniels to drink. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> I've um, had it before. Yeah, yeah, but if you're going to spend the money, you're still going to get something yeah. else. It's an advanced yeah. version of that, of yeah. Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. yes. Most people that are buying it are buying it because there's somebody that they know likes Jack Daniels, and they just want to get a nicer version of it for them. For, for them, yes. Branding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, their, their brand is really yeah. more noticed than their than the whiskey itself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is very interesting. I really, I'm really, I'm glad we did this on this comparison. Do we have anything else that we want to add to these two? 
No. I think, uh, I think Did you uh, come to a conclusion because you tried it afterwards? Well, I think I've already said that the Uncle Nearest is, it's a lot more fun. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot more fun, bro. Yeah. The Jack Daniels is, you know, fine. It's JD, yeah. bro. It's, it's you, whiskey. You got a shrug when you say okay. it. It's yeah. <laughs> it's whiskey. It's JD, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. And, uh, you know, like, well, we thank Uncle Nearest for, like, coming, starting us all off and yeah. training him how to make whiskey then and popularized all over our country. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have anything else to add, then, Eddie, where's our subscribe button? It's right here. It's right here. Just just, just touch it one time. Bam! Bam! So, uh, Burn, that's our signal. That's our cue to call for the... All for one? One, one for all. all.